Femme Forte is sponsored by Girls March. Imagine walking into a drumline or front ensemble audition and only seeing other girls there. It may be tough to picture. Girls March offers seminars for young women in the marching arts because this rarely, if ever, happens. As a female percussionist myself, this is something I wish I had growing up. Girls March is offering a camp this upcoming summer. Register now at girlsmarch.org. I guess really similar to what you just said, uh, it's almost like a uh, like realizing that this was once a pipe dream, you know, like when I was a, when I was a kid, like, you know, watching Blast, like seeing Blast live for the first time or like seeing videos of Stomp, you know, that, you know, your music teacher, elementary music teacher would play in the classroom and thinking, I want to write something like that one day or I want to be in something like that one day. And then it comes around and, you know, you you work really hard to be able to say yes. Lauren mentioned something like that yesterday. Um, just like putting yourselves in a or yourself in a position to be able to say yes when the call comes around and working as hard as you can to be ready for that moment, even if you think you might not be yet. Um, yeah, and then to, to do the thing and then complete it, get home and just realize, I just did that. You know, <laughs> like disbelief. <laughs> Welcome to Femme Forte, a podcast where we celebrate women in music and performing arts. I'm your host, Amanda DeVries. Hello and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm your host, Amanda DeFries, music media professional, experienced performer, and musician. For those of you who are an oldie but a goodie, thank you for your support. It's so great to have you. Here's your weekly reminder that one of the easiest things you can do to support the show is by sharing and subscribing. And if you're listening to this on Spotify, you can go ahead and drop some comments and questions in the interactive feature at the bottom of the episode. You can also leave us voicemails either with your thoughts on the show or some questions you'd like for us to answer on an upcoming episode. Go to femfortepodcast.com and click the mic button in the corner. I'm so lucky to call these two amazing women my colleagues and more importantly, my friends. Today, I'm joined by Kaylee Brooke and Jamise Moses. These amazing women I have looked up to my entire life, and it was so amazing to have them on the show. Kaylee and Jamise are absolutely demolishing the industry as being a part of the first inaugural women cast to play The Musician on the Blue Man Group World Tour and have performed in various roles around the world, including NFL stadiums, nationally recognized theme parks, and so much more. We talk about their journeys as touring musicians and the steps they took to get to these amazing opportunities. This episode is for those interested in a performing career or simply looking for your way into finding your first gig. So without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome back to Femme Forte. Today we have two very special guests. We are here at the Girls March Camp in Sugarland, Texas. I have Kaylee Brooke and Jamise Moses. Thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, Thank you. Thanks for having us. Awesome. Well, I know um, where y'all's background uh, comes from, but go ahead and tell our listeners and our viewers um, kind of who you are, where you're from, and a little bit about your upbringing into music. Um, all right, I'll go first. My name is Jamise Moses. I'm from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I reside in Charlotte right now, kind of back and forth. And um, music started for me very young. I was in church. My dad played drums. So I was like three when I got my first drum set. And I thought I was gonna be like a drum set artist. Like I was, I was like watching videos, like when Pearl released like DVDs and like even like uh, tapes. Like I was watching tapes and um, got to high school and I was like found marching band and I was like, this is cool too. Like I want to try this so I can get better at drum set. And that's when like things totally shifted. So I went to Ant for college, uh, marched a couple of years there, and I started a business with my friends. Uh, doing like corporate entertainment and like just any kind of random gigs like it'd be like at Google's headquarters and we're like in front of a bunch of like business people and we're playing drums it's like super weird but it's a way to wake people up and entertain them and like show them how you can develop a craft if you like work hard at it so that's what I do every day now is like corporate entertainment yeah Uh, I'm Kaylee. I grew up in the North Texas area Um, I went to LD Bell High School I uh, was super involved in uh, the marching band activity. Um, and after that, I went to UNT, just like a lot of other Girls March ladies here. Um, and after UNT, I went to Texas A&M Commerce, and I did my master's there, studied with Dr. Zader. Um, and in between my undergrad and grad degree, uh, I started freelancing as much as I could in the DFW area because I at the time I wasn't sure if I wanted to go back to school and pursue another degree uh, because I really wasn't sure 
which path in music or in percussion uh, or performance even that I wanted to take. I knew maybe the band director route uh, wasn't quite calling my name. Uh, the same with like orchestral uh, orchestral music and um, taking that route or like the military band route. So that year in between, uh, in between college, it really it was super pivotal for me. Um, kind of like Jimmy I started uh, playing with entertainment drum lines, um, specifically dynamic rhythm and also the Dallas Mavericks. And um, yeah, we did a lot of corporate events, um, just like what you described. And yeah, that, that uh, I kind of fell in love with that style of drumming, like just strictly for entertainment purposes. Um, yeah, so I, I went and did my master's and after that, uh, the, uh, the Blast gig came about and um, that was a show I'd always wanted to be part of um, since I was a kid, since I saw it. Actually, that's kind of what started my, my interest in drumming and in music was uh, seeing different shows like Blast, like the more theatrical side of drumming, like Blast, like Stomp, um, and other spinoff versions of it. So to see that and to have that like spark my interest in drumming and then for it to come full circle later, actually being part of a show like that, um, was really, really cool to see. Um, yeah, it, it felt really awesome. Um, fast forward through other shows, other corporate drumline gigs, um, through other auditions, hearing a lot of no's <laughs> and some yeses too. Fast forward through all of that. Uh, now I live in New York and uh, I play with the Blue Man Group on their world tour. Yeah, I, I mean, that's super awesome. And And I kid you not, like, this podcast like right here like in this week in general like I it's come full circle for me as I've told you both before like it is such a dream to be working alongside y'all to have y'all on the show to share your story and it like it, it, it gets me really emotional about it and as I discussed you know with y'all last night like it's just so amazing and I'm so fortunate that you want to support a project like this and um it absolutely means the world to me us too i think i can speak for the both of us yeah yeah feel, so, feel the same. yeah so let's like jump right in i mean um the big hot ticket is like um when i found out that both of y'all are part of the blue man group and like to me like that's absolutely wild absolutely inspiring and tell me a little bit about like the start into that journey <laughs> my start is honestly from a, a dm from like somebody I worked with at Carowinds and she like just sends me this thing. She's like, you should, you should submit for this. I found this audition for Blue Man. I'm like, huh, okay, sure, I'll do it. Like, so I, I took like a week, like asking everybody in like my green room, like, hey, does this reel look okay? Like, is this good enough? <laughs> like, should I, I'm scared to like hit the go button, but like finally one of my castmates talked me into doing it. And uh, I think two weeks later I was flying to New York for a callback. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mine started um, like a year, maybe a year and a half ago or two years ago. Um, yeah, the same the same posting kind of popped up, and I actually didn't see it, and someone someone showed the post to me <laughs> too, and it was actually someone that I met in a different audition like a week before that. Uh, it was a, an audition that we both got cut from, but she she saw the posting in like an actor's um, actors like, access. Yeah, an actors yeah. access. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, she sent it to me, and she was like, hey, I, you know, really enjoyed meeting you, like, had a lot of fun in the audition, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this looks like something you should do. So I, yeah, read the read the casting call and was like, absolutely. So sent in all my stuff, and, um, yeah, f uh, the process was uh, pretty long. It, it lasted a few months um, with just multiple callbacks. This was, like, the uh, original casting, so they, I think they, they, uh, had a lot of people submit, and so it kind of took them a little bit longer to take people through the process. Um, so eventually, it ended up months later, ended up working out, and um, yeah, now now we're both with the show, and we actually just got done uh, uh, spending a week with each other uh, in Europe, and um, yeah, Jamise knocked it out of the park. She showed up, did the show. I uh, was only there for a few days, but yeah, she killed it. It was awesome. Yeah, that's that's so inspiring, inspiring and amazing. And um, out of curiosity, like when you find auditions for this, I mean, you you did, both did mention that someone just DM'd it to you, but like in other 
um, aspects when you go to auditions? Like, where is like a resource um, if someone was looking to pursue that route? Where what would be like the first couple places they would look? That is a really good question, and I feel like it, you might get this too. But I get that a lot. Um, it it's too bad that we don't have like um, like a backstage or a playbill or an actor's access, but strictly for musicians. And there might be a database like that or a website that exists out there that I don't know about. Um, but those are ones that I like have like open tabs on on my computer at all times. And I check constantly like the playbills, the backstages. Um, I have an actor's access profile too. Actually, I'd forgot that I had one until my friend sent me that, that casting call. And I was like, Oh yeah, I have a profile on this website. I should check it more often. But, um, yeah, that along with just staying, I don't know, just like staying active on social media because, yeah. um, you know, companies, entertainment companies like the JMMDs and the Windish Entertainments, like they're they're pushing casting call posts all the time, and it spreads like wildfire. So I think that's where I see a lot of um, a lot of like activity happening. Also, just like going out and looking for it. like I literally Google musician comma auditions every other month or so, like just to see what'll pop up. Um, different theme parks, like if you go on Universal's website, you can look for auditions. There are, like, a couple of websites. Like, there's, like, Gig Salad. But it's more for, like, bands and, like, established, like, artists. So it is hard. It's really hard for marching, like, percussionists to find gigs unless you're, like, really pushing yourself on social media, like, connecting with companies like Windish and JM and like, just looking out for it, truthfully. Yeah, and... Um, I mean, I could say the same thing from like when I got connected with JMD. It was also just a DM, and and I was so lucky and so glad to have that opportunity. I think that was really like unique and pretty special. And um, you know, off of that, like for y'all, like when was your pinnacle moment of like deciding that you wanted to kind of pursue performance full time, and, and what did that process look like for the both of you? <laughs> I don't know if I'm there yet. <laughs> <laughs> Truthfully, every every like every dry spell is like oh, I've got to find a backup like yeah. career. Like that's the part that people don't talk about either. Like we we perform for a living, yes, but also at the same time, like I have multiple other side hustles that I do um, because sometimes it's you know the gigs aren't consistent, and um, you know I think. If a bunch of actors, let's say, or uh, people in different disciplines in the arts would be listening to this podcast right now, they would probably say, duh, that's what we all do. But as musicians, and especially like in college um, or like in a university setting, we're not really told or taught a lot about what it takes to be a freelancing musician and that that might involve doing a bunch of other things that have nothing to do with music. And more importantly, that that's okay that's the way it goes. That's the, you know, that is how to make a living doing something that you love. You might have to do other things that are kind of a means to an end. Um, and it's not a bad thing. That's just how it works, you know? Yeah. And, and truthfully and honestly, like one of the things when creating this podcast and asking myself, yes, of course, I want to empower young women to, you know, in music by sharing the stories and experiences of people who are absolutely like kicking butt in the industry. Um, which is why I have both of you on here. But also, I I, I saw that gap in the, um, you know, in, in resources, in, like, finding the education of, you know, someone like me. Like, when I was a lot younger, I had that same goal of, like, living in New York, playing in, like, Broadway pits, and that was, like, my dream. But to be honest, that seemed so far-fetched um, when I was at, you know, when I was younger, because I didn't even know where to start. And so that's kind of why I wanted to, you know, bring this podcast to fruition, whether you are a freelance performer, whether you are like a band director into your first 15th year of teaching and still don't know what to do. Like it's getting experience and getting advice for people who are doing it here and now and hopefully being able to one, relate to some of those experiences, but also to like help them elevate their them in their career by listening to some of the information that y'all have provided. So yeah, totally. Um, Sandy, uh, Sandy, Lauren, and Adrian, I think all three at some point yesterday during um, their podcast episode, 
said something to the effect of be comfortable with being uncomfortable and just going for whatever it is that you want, even if you think there's no way it would ever work out or you don't know if it were to work out, you don't know how to actually actually do it and make it happen. Like you don't have all the fine details figured out. I think the the best things I've ever done are the things that have terrified me so bad. You know, like <laughs> absolutely. Like even drum corps, it was Lauren Teal that talked me into marching drum corps. I'd never been in a front ensemble in my life. And if it weren't for her and Rachel, like teaching me how to play scales, I didn't even know all my scales when I got to UNT. I was strictly like a, a drummer, quote, whatever that means. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I didn't think I was ready. I was terrified. And I got to March Vanguard, you know, and like I figured it out with the help of a lot of people. But same thing in my professional life, you know, like I didn't think I was ready to be in a show like Blast. And I almost said no. And same thing for Blue Man. I didn't know if I, I thought that they made a mistake when they called me eventually. I thought that they, I was like the wrong Kaylee and they meant to call a different Kaylee. Like I just thought they were playing a prank. But um, yeah, you just do it anyway. You know, w whatever it is you want to do, like just go for it. See yeah. what happens. Yeah. Well, um, you know, based off of your experiences, like what, in the course of your career, um, how has those like experience experiences impacted you in a, like a positive way? So you like mentioned Blast, Kaylee, and then Jamise. I know that you just like um, were a part of this uh, collaborated project with like Xfinity, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So whoever wants to go first, you can talk a little <laughs> bit on that. Um, each opportunity is like mind blowing for me. So like, I, I kind of have the same thought. Like every time like I get casted for something, I'm like, me. Really? Are you, <laughs> is this a joke? Like, like that project, um, I got a call. I was already pretty busy and I flew to LA. I had no idea what I was going to be playing. Like I'm literally on a, on a plane with me and my snare drum and I get there and they're like, yeah, we're going to do like a cover of, of somebody's music. It's either going to be Coco Jones or, or Mooney Long. And I'm just like, and you want me to play a marching snare drum? Okay. So like I'm in the process and I'm realizing like, wow, I really am going to like work with somebody who is like on the charts right now. And like my mind is like just blown away. But I guess every time I complete something, like I just feel like I'm adding like a notch on that resume and like I'm just proud of myself. But at the same time, I'm in like disbelief. Like I just worked with like Grammy Award winning producers and I'm just like, um, OK, well, what's next? <laughs> yeah. so I guess like I'm always like just even though like I'm putting these notches on the resume, I'm still like always grinding and like, all right, how can I take this even higher? Like, that's always a goal. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, what was the question again? Uh, <laughs> it was how has, you know, your ex experiences like blast and stuff like Im impacted you, like looking back, like, you know, through the course of your career, like in a positive way. Yeah. Um, I guess really similar to what you just said, uh, it's almost like uh like realizing that this was once a pipe dream, you know, like when I was a, when I was a kid, like, you know, watching Blast, like seeing Blast live for the first time or like seeing videos of Stomp, you know, that, you know, your music teacher elementary music teacher would play in the classroom and thinking, I want to write something like that one day or I want to be in something like that one day. And then it comes around and, you know, you you work really hard to be able to say yes. Lauren mentioned something like that yesterday. Um, just like putting yourselves in a, or yourself in a position to be able to say yes when the call comes around and working as hard as you can to be ready for that moment, even if you think you might not be yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then to, to do the thing and then complete it, get home and just realize, I just did that, you know, like. <laughs> Disbelief. <laughs> yeah, it's just like I, you know, I, I, dreamt about it for so long and then when it actually happens for me like especially the second blast tour that I like I had one under my belt came around again second blast tour I I really like made myself slow down a little bit and appreciate every single moment of it yeah. because you realize the older you get like those opportunities are really like they don't come around very often yeah. and so when they do it's like you just want to live in it as long as you can and and like remember how it feels to be in that in that place and same with blue man like 
yeah, it's work some days and uh, well, every day it's work, but some <laughs> days it, it feels more like work than other days because it is a job, yeah. you know, and um, like any other job that people have, it's not always going to going to be, you know, the best feeling ever. Yeah. But in those moments, especially, I just have to sit back and realize I am in Geneva, Switzerland right now playing with the Blue Man group. Like, what is my life right now? You know, yeah. like, yeah. this is everything I've ever worked for. And it just feels so good to be in that place, you know. And so, like you mentioned, like, when there are dry spells and when things are a little bit slower, you can think back and remember exactly how it feels to, to be doing what you were meant to do, you know. What a, like, what a crazy experience yeah. people get to have to do something that they love to do. And that's their job. That's insane. <laughs> I just imagine, like, going back for five minutes and seeing little Jamis, three years old, with, like, the little, it's like a symbol in the middle and, like, two toms and a bass drum. <laughs> like, imagine just watching her and, like, you don't even know what you're going to do in, like, 20 years. Yeah. 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 So just, like, having those moments, you know, at the forefront of your mind, given that, you know, sometimes you have these really unique experiences and that you're living out, you know, your dream job, so to speak. Is there any times um, where you have, like, moments of imposter syndrome, like, where you start to doubt yourself, like, given, like, all the glory? Absolutely. Like, yes. hundred times yes. And for me, it's always a... It's more teaching moments. It's like um, when Coastal does clinics, like, there's 50 kids in front of you who have... studied videos like and they're like if you mess up they're gonna be like I saw that I saw you missed that that stick twirl so like that that's the moment for me of like uh am I really up here right now like am I really doing this and I and I think that plays off like Lauren what Lauren said like you have to prepare for those moments and like always like one of my line brothers has this quote is like stay ready so you don't have to get ready and it's, it's just being on top of that craft at all times. But, like, the the syndrome, it does still creep in. Like, every once in a while, like, I'll get on Instagram and be like, wow, a lot of people follow me. Like, a lot of people look up to me and, like, want to buy certain sticks because I play with those sticks or ask me, what kind of pad is that? And I'm just like, me? Really? Are you serious? Like, you want what I want? Like, <laughs> it's weird yeah. sometimes. Like, it, it happens. Yeah, totally. It still creeps up. But yeah. You have to just stay positive. Like, yeah, totally. It's something that I fight, uh, like, pretty regularly still. Like, I, I think when we're younger, we think, well, when we get to this certain, um, like, when we accomplish X, Y, Z things or when we get to this certain age, all of that will go away. Like Sandy mentioned yesterday, there's never an age you get to, I think, when you're just not nervous yeah. anymore. You know, like, that doesn't that doesn't necessarily disappear and same I, for me at least with imposter syndrome like it doesn't go away but um i know what it feels like to to be experiencing imposter syndrome and so through like just acknowledging it and knowing what it feels like i've taught myself different ways to yeah. to like retrain my brain into thinking more positively or you know whatever i need at the time or maybe i need to go for a run or exercise or I'm not getting enough water. Like, you know, like when I'm not taking care of my body, that's when imposter syndrome creeps in even more. Like when I don't feel good physically too, you know, so things like that um, help my brain also, you know? Yeah. And I mean, I I could, one, it speaks to like who you are, who you both are as human beings. Like the, the, even though like imposter syndrome is not always like the best thing to have, like at the end of the day, it shows that like both of you given all like these high, you know, accomplishments that you have done, like are still human and is still like very humble about it, which is like truly amazing. Cause like, yes, you could be like a really great performer, but you can also be a jerk about it too. Like, and one of the things that like, I think in general about all this, you know, all the staff that is here is like, we are all like, very humble people and it's just so you know grateful to just surround yourself with positive people who have really good moral character like that yeah you can feel it the second you walk in to the room here you know you can you can tell when you're when you're in a room full of great humans that all just want the best for everybody around them um because I'm sure the or maybe I've experienced this too like I've been in plenty of rooms where that is not the energy you know unfortunately it's like um, a competition. 
sometimes. There's yeah. no competition here. There's no, that's I can play this lick yeah. better than you. Like, we're just having fun. Like, we're drumming together. We're yeah, and it, like, it's definitely something I didn't have growing up, you know, as a, as a female in percussion. Um, you know, it was really just the idea of, like, how can we pit these young women against each other? You know, that was, that was a mentality when I was growing up. And, uh, yeah, through something like Girls March or just through Girls March in, in general, it, it shows girls that we don't – there's room for all of us, you know. And whoever told you that there wasn't, they're lying, you know. Yeah. It's not true. And it's – for me, like, in my personal life, it's really nice to be in a place where I can be sitting and watching someone, uh, watching another – girl like even in the even in the role of the rock star with blue man like i can sit and watch jamise do a show or mckenna or nicole um who are also in the same role i can watch them and just be so happy like genuinely happy that they're thriving and just so excited for them no like no jealousy no competition like none of that exists and i think it's through you know things like girls march and people like rachel taylor and lauren and sandy and jamise like it's really a game changer. Like it has been for me personally, but also it's it's gonna be such a game changer for these young girls that are here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, just so like a one-off question, um, the the role that you both are playing, um, I, that's a fairly new role, right? Like has hasn't it like the Blue Man Group has always been men, correct? Up until last year. Yeah. So, yeah, she's brand new. Yeah, so how does it feel, like, just diving into that a little bit, I mean, in the spirit of we are here at Girls' March, like, how does it feel, like, to be a part of, like, that inaugural cast of, like, you know, uh, like, a female percussionist being added to, like, such a name? It is really cool. <laughs> it's yeah. cool. It's super, you know, it's it's kind of, in some ways, it's, it's easy to think uh, it's overdue. It's 2023 yeah. or at the time 2022. Yeah. Um, but it's it's still like that doesn't over or shouldn't overshadow the fact that this is so important, you know, um, like, yeah, it's cool that like I get to be part of um, a brand new role and something that really is um, is important. And it's a fun show. It's a cool job. But bigger picture this is so important for women in music and women in percussion, you know? Yeah. Um, Representation yeah. matters. It like, really does, yeah. So there's, like, a little girl that's sitting in the crowd that's like, oh, one day I could do that. Like, yeah, totally. that's awesome. Yeah, and it's also really cool that, uh, like, we, like, the four of us that are in the role, we, we all play the same character, but we all play her completely differently. <laughs> and we, yeah, we bring just, like, different elements of, who the rock star is. I mean we're still learning who she is we don't we don't really know exactly who she is yet but we're <laughs> through the four of us we're learning a lot about her and Jamise brings something to the rock star that I don't I bring you know I bring something different and uh and we're all learning from each other too and how we portray this character which is so cool yeah um one of the things that I really you know love about the both of you is like you're both are like really passionate ab about like empowering women, especially in this field. And I mean, all more the reason of why Girls March is this, all more the reason like why this is such important and, and, and why we're here. Um, so just a little bit like on that, like through your own personal journey, um, how, how has that impacted you? I really like mean it when I say this is one of my favorite weeks of the year. Like, cause I, I teach. I get to see like a couple of girls in my school and things and I wish like I wish I could bring them to this so that they could like go through this experience but like I guess like I always I always leave this camp feeling like fulfilled yeah I guess is the right word like it just it's just really special like it, and I don't experience it on this level anywhere else like I get a little taste of it when we're working together but like for there to be this many girls together, like it just, I don't know, there's a certain energy here that's just fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this has easily been one of my favorite weeks of the year. This is the first year I've gotten to be here in person. Um, but from the start, as soon as I heard about it, I mean, Rachel and I went to school together and marched from court together. Um, and as soon as I heard about it, 
I called her and was like, how can I be part of this? Please, can I be part of this? Um, so, yeah, it's, 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 really, it's really cool to watch from afar and watch it happen every year. But to actually be in the room, like it just, it, it feels like everything I knew it would feel like. Um, because it was, it's everything that I didn't have, you know, um, just coming up in percussion. Um, and so that's really cool to see. It's really cool to see um, so many young girls just like have an opportunity to bond with each other and not be, like I said, pitted against each other. Yeah. Um, but also it's like a reunion too, <laughs> yes. because we all know each other through different, you know, different parts of our lives. Um, you know, and some of my friendships with these uh, ladies have gone back, you know, over 10 years now and recent friendships too. And we don't get to see each other very often. So this is a, this is a perfect way for all of us to just reconnect. Yeah. Yeah, which is equally as fun as I think we're having as much fun as the girls in the camp are having. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. If like, not more. If not more know. fun. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's like, and that's one thing I, uh, you know, this being my second time here is like, it's such a supportive environment. And like I was telling Rachel earlier, like as someone who has been following Girls March, like as, you know, a young high schooler and now being able to like work alongside like amazing people, like just being in the same room as y'all and like coming like not from a student perspective like because you know like technically like you know crossman wins like you yeah. know and like yeah, when we, we met I was also still a uh, still student so like it's just so cool like and I was talking a little bit to like uh to Adrian about this last night um but I'll you know and maybe a little bit of you but like I've always felt like the like, high caliber like I've always put y'all on a pedestal pedestal and in a really positive way because again I look up to all of y'all I'm so inspired by y'all and like just the fact that like here and even outside of this I I get seen as an equal is just mind-blowing to me um and like even like doing this podcast like you know going back to like the whole imposter syndrome like even though like so far I've had a very positive response from this podcast like I still feel like there's so much more work to do on on my end and like you know, this is only the beginning and and I, I'm so excited and so grateful that the community has supported this in every positive way. And it's been truly amazing so far. Yeah, I mean, I think on the other side of the of the table, we're seeing you thrive and seeing Femme Forte take off, which is absolutely no surprise, but also to be asked to talk and chat on your podcast, like... <laughs> Is so syndrome. cool. Yeah. <laughs> also, like, are you sure? Right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. But yeah, I mean, it's it's really cool to to see. Like, I mean, yeah, I, I met you when you were marching crossman wins, and yeah, now you're running a podcast and like, yeah, taking over the world. It's amazing. Yeah. So. Well. Yeah, it's been such a crazy experience. The progression of the over the last couple of years and truly and honestly like this is again this is only the beginning and I cannot wait to see like what further and like and and me even asking y'all to be a part of the podcast like not that I didn't think you were gonna say yes or anything but I was I was like I was, I was like writing the email or like you know writing the like request I was like okay I was like how do I address this like <laughs> I was like I was like I got I was like how do I how do I make it seem like this is a really cool thing um it's awesome I love it yeah it was an instant yes yeah like, see there's there. no brainer like <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna yeah. be nervous no but like, yes. Yeah. yeah, totally. And one of the one of the personal aspects I love about this is like, uh, yes, I get like recommendations from other people I know to bring you on the pod. But like it's it's personal requests that, of people who really matter to like my my life that make it the episode that that much more special. Like, for instance, um, this this today, our episode two launched and it was with um, Dr. Elizabeth Jansen, who was a professor of mine at, at Texas a and Kingsville. And, um, and like for the first time, like we talk on the pod about, um, she never really gets like a genuine, like, thank you from her student. And it's like, for me, it's yes. Like I wanted to like put a light on her because like she talks about not really advocating for herself a lot. And like, it's, that's like my moment to like give you the mic because I truly believe in everything that you're doing. So that's so cool. Yeah. I mean, I wish this podcast had existed you know, years ago, because it's so important and so necessary. And 
you know, I think it means a thousand times more to have a good human behind it running the machine, you know, like yourself. So, yeah, I think it, it means a lot to all of us that have been asked to, to be on this. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you for wanting to hear our story. Yeah. Of course. Well, we're just about to wrap up here. And um, uh, before I let y'all go, I just, again, thank you for being a part of this show. I'm so excited. Like, all the information that you, that you have given and everything that you said, like, I've truly taken to heart. And it just means the absolute, wor wor the absolute world to me. So before we go, I do have one last question for you. So knowing the knowledge that you know now, what is some things that you wish you have told or told yourself or what is some advice you wish you would have given as your younger self, whether it was making the jump to, you know, pursue music performance, whether it was even, you know, picking up sticks or mallets for the first time, like just kind of looking back on the whole, the whole course of your career. What, what, what advice to like listeners and viewers, like having the experience and knowledge you have now that you have told yourself? Stay in piano. <laughs> listen to your mom and finish out your piano lesson <laughs> that's number one probably but also just to I don't know to keep pushing and like don't be afraid be comfortable being uncomfortable it takes it takes a while to get to a space I think where you feel like you can do that but if I could convince my younger self to go out for more because you can you can achieve it if you try but like I was too scared to try yeah, I would tell myself to get out of my own way. Like, so, man, so many times. Like, I look back at so many times um, growing up. I mean, even in when I got to UNT, I I changed my major. Like, I was accepted as a music major, and I dropped out my first year. And I wasn't a music major. Um, I I was undecided. Like, I didn't. I just did my basics the first year. But uh, it wasn't for any other reason other than I was just scared. I just didn't think that I had what it took. Even though like there was evidence proving otherwise, my I just got in my own way. My you know I was too in my head about it. Um, so yeah, I definitely would have told told myself that more as a kid. But I I try to make up for it now. And anytime I feel like I'm not ready for something, that's the time I do it anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's the time to push yourself. Is when yeah. it when if it's scaring you, you must be excited about it. Yeah, then it's probably right. Uh -huh. <laughs> if you're scared. You should do it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, where can our listener and viewers find you? Is there a website, Instagram, social media handle? Absolutely. Poetic underscore beats with two S's as well as find your rhythm. Fire beats. Yeah. You should plug your companies. Oh, yeah. 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 So find your rhythm entertainment is my my other baby. And it's it's still new. It's growing just <laughs> like this, this podcast. But it's fire beats on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook. Yeah. Follow me. Yeah, definitely follow all three of us. Uh, yeah, my Instagram is Kaylee Book Drums. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much again for being on the show. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Femme Forte. Femme Forte is produced and hosted by me, Amanda DeFries. Music is by Humans Win. To learn more about our guests, sponsors, and get more resources, go to FemmePortePodcast.com and follow us on social media at Femme Forte Podcast.